It has been such a long hiatus. Thank you so much for being here, for staying here. This is Rose Connections. I'm Janet Rose, and uh, hopefully you've subscribed and you are welcoming me back <laughs> after this long time. It has been a really difficult time ever since my dad and my grandpa died. I talk about that a lot. I've, I've talked about that a lot in reels and things like that. Um, I've continued doing reels. I've continued doing a lot of different work, but my work has changed since I started this channel and there's likely going to be some rebranding happening sometime in the next year. But I wanted to just share some of the lessons that I've learned, some of those radical reflections, lessons that I talk about. Um, and I want to get started doing these videos again. I don't know how frequently I'm going to do them. I don't know how uh, long they're going to be. I try to aim for under 20 minutes for these videos. I think that's what's reasonable for me, what's easiest for me. But during this time and specifically like it kicking off when my dad and my grandpa died, not only uh, did I lose two really big men in my life, but then it became about healing the, the feminine line in my life as well. Healing the wounds of the divine feminine or the toxic feminine or the wounded feminine that live in our line as well. The toxic masculinity that has invaded so many lifetimes and so many uh, generations that have come before me. And I've learned so much about my family, about my own identity, and I've wrestled and struggled with my own identity quite a bit, and especially in the last year. Because one of the things I realized is a lot of my wounding has been based around my identity. And whether that's my identity as a bisexual woman or um, as uh, a disabled woman or a woman <laughs> in general um, or Latina or half white, half Latina, which is closer to the truth. And living in that in between space has been utterly difficult for most of my life. And Earlier in my life, if, and if you subscribe to this channel because you knew me long, way back when in Pueblo or in Chicago when I was, you know, through high school and into college, then you remember the confidence that I had. Yeah, you know, I might doubt myself, but not to the level that adult Janet has doubted myself in all these years. <clears throat> and I, I had a fire and a passion about me. I cared more about passion than anything else. I was probably, you know, throughout most of high school and college, I was probably the personification of, of the page of wands. And I enjoyed that on some level, but throughout law school and when I was outed and throughout all of these other gathering traumas and, and recurring traumas and systemic traumas and vicarious traumas and re-traumatizations. Oh yeah. So much of that has been the fabric of my life. And so much of that trauma was based around and associated with identity in some deep way, or my reaction to the trauma made me question my identity in some way, made me question who I was. And I think most people who have known me for any amount of time know that if there's anything, Janet Rose knows who she is. I lost sight of that the more that the trauma accumulated and the more that the trauma was just ever present in my life, including and especially reflected in the stories of clients that I was serving. 
when you see and you have to bump against the same wall of systemic trauma over and over and over again, the same pattern of someone who is unhoused getting swept, their meds then not being available, (laughs) them getting worsening medical conditions because of that, and this cycle of continual re-traumatization that we see happen within these systems over and over and over again. And that's actually who I'm here to serve are the folks that have to see that over and over, either in their own lives because they're having to navigate these systems themselves, they've navigated these systems their entire lives, or their families did before them. And as well as the people who are serving them, whether or not they have navigated those systems themselves. Because when you are coming at this from a heart-centered place, you cannot help but identify and feel. And that was what ultimately was keeping me from knowing myself was I was constantly on guard, not just for my clients, for my employees, for my coworkers, for the systems, the good people in the systems that I work with. Sorry, this one piece of hair is driving me nuts. There we go. (laughs) I'm here to serve all of that. Because when you're having to keep your guard up for the people that you serve, you are also having to keep your guard up for yourself. And at some point, one of those is going to fail because we can't always be in a million different places at the same time. And when you have multiple traumas in your life, I have likened it to, you know, uh, sort of like an Ocean's Eleven type of situation where you have multiple uh, systems of of security happening all at the same time. And so you trip one, you could trip a hundred others. And that's what having complex trauma feels like is these multiple kind of waves of lasers that you have to navigate just perfectly in order to get through the day without tripping a wire and setting off an alarm and setting off the alarm bells in your body. And I've said this before on this channel. I've said this before in all of my classes. If 90% of your energy is being spent just trying to keep yourself safe, do you think that you are going to be working at your best in your job or in your family or toward those goals? And so, so many of us have been in this just mere survival mode for so long because the systems require us to be. And one of the beautiful gifts that I have been given, and I am very aware of the amount of privilege that I have to even be able to do this, is I was able to take a significant amount of time off from working. Um, in order to really resolve all those kernels of, of pain that reside in my system, all the kind of source points for those different security systems and start unraveling them and, and untying those knots so that they're not so sensitive all the time so that they don't mistake a friend for folk. And I have been very lucky to have had so much good help along the way in that, that I was able to do some very deep and meaningful ancestral healing. And I won't go into the details of that because I'm going to try to do a blog post about it, you know, I make a lot of promises that I may not be able to follow through on, but that's been in the works for a while, this post about my own family history and how that relates to the wounding that I have endured per this identity. 
and specifically my freedom, my freedom as a woman and my freedom as a Latina and my freedom as a bisexual woman. is definitely what I know my ancestors have wanted for me, but there's been so much resistance because of this, the intense number of ways in which we have been taught and modeled to hide ourselves. Hiding ourselves was the only way to stay safe in so many of our cultures and so many of our lineages and right now we're living in a time that is trying to dial back that freedom I would not be here but for the freedoms that I have had to express myself and to live my truth out loud. And it's extraordinary because, you know, we were cleaning out some, some of the storage unit the other day and stuff from when my grandpa died. Like, we haven't dealt with this for like two years. And so I was looking through one of the scrapbooks and I found an article, two, a couple of different articles about me um, from when I was a kid. And I realized that the fear that I have had about being known is not organic to me. That was something that was created in me by these life experiences and that I can choose to not let it dictate who I am. And so finding these articles about me going to space camp uh, when I was in fourth grade, and that was the start of me doing any public speaking. I would not be able to do this today if I had not started doing that when I was in fourth grade. And in fourth grade, I loved being able to just share my story and connect with people who enjoyed Space Camp too and who were nerds and Trekkies too. And that's still all I want to do is connect with people who see that same world as me and who want to share that lens and I want to share in their lens. I want to see the world the way, the way that they do. And I want to find what is our common ground for that. And that's organic to me. Telling my story and using my story to connect with others is as Janet Rose as it gets. And Later on, there was another article about me in a Marian conference. And so serving the divine feminine has also always been a part of me. And it's always been such a sure part of me. Now, now specifically that time in my life, and I'll write about this some more. There's so much unraveling of my Catholicism that I have to do. And that's going to be a whole series of videos, I'm sure, <laughs> in and of themselves. And a series of blog posts because it's a very long story. And my history with Catholicism is very deep. And it's very loving for the most part. I just outgrew it. But seeing that, that confidence that I had and the self-assuredness that I had of my calling... I'm getting teary. Was the reminder of who I am. And then finding an article about my great-great-grandfather and some of the beliefs that he had explained some of the resistance that I have felt in trying to be bigger. In trying to reclaim these original parts of myself that got buried under the trauma. And so I've been very, very lucky to have done some intense work about that and have the space and the time and the support I needed to do that. And so that's really like ultimately why I wanted to kind of restart these videos because I do a little bit of it on Instagram, but I think it's more meaningful when there's more time for me to just talk. Um, 
I really want to get back to being able to share stories like this and, and share things that I've noticed in my life and in my education. I, but the education that I've had, the people that I've met, the people that I currently know, the wide variety of people and the, the overlap of synergy that I see in the world if you could see what I see, I think you'd be very hopeful for the world right now. But we have to be able to share our stories. And I, I feel that so strongly in my bones for us. And I just want to be able to be here to share in that with you. And hopefully to spark some ideas in yourself of ways in which you can capture your own light and shine too. The next one of these videos that I want to do is about how we need to show up and glow. So subscribe to this station channel channel. That's the word <laughs> subscribe to the channel so that you're notified when that video comes up. I am really, uh, I'm trying out a new schedule. I'm doing all sorts of things, including I have now a Substack, sharpsweetbella.substack.com, where you can see all of my intuitive readings every week and just get that in your inbox for free. It's brand, it's completely free. And then I also have a Patreon where if you want to support me financially, that's a really wonderful way to do that because you get some extras. And again, going along this intuitive reading route, I know it can be surprising for some folks because of my legal background, because of my policy background, because so many people know me for, you know, kind of being an advisor in more, um, traditionally legal ways. And so, but the intuitive part of me has always been there like 100% from day one. It's just always been in the undercurrent. And now I'm flipping the script and I'm putting the legal stuff and the policy frameworks that I know about and specifically the gaps of those that I know about in the undercurrent so that I can work on those while highlighting the more intuitive work that I do as well. And that includes Reiki. And I'm going to have some specials specifically for patrons for Reiki, but I'm going to talk about that more in a different video. And I am going to um, be offering more opportunities for folks to connect with me specifically through Patreon and Substack. So please subscribe to me here and there so that we can stay in touch and that you can be involved in everything that I'm doing from the books that I'm writing to the videos and the classes that I'm teaching and hopefully even the readings that you'll be purchasing for yourself. So take care. Thank you so much for staying here and have a beautiful and wonderful week.